Okay, I'm going to show you or pace you through one more go round of modifying this portfolio template. What I have prepared in advance here are a couple of different background images and a single uh, image of a, a flower here. This time I'm going to go for a kind of a springy feel. And so I'm going to open my, my portfolio page here. And in general, when I want to obviously do different kinds of things to a portfolio or any page, I'd like to start with the bigger picture. For example, I'd like to leverage as much as I can through my page properties in terms of overall font, certainly the background, certainly any default colors, etc. So for my first go round here, I'm going to go ahead and go to page properties and I'm going to lay in a background image and this time I'm going to browse and of course again I've already looked at all these images and picked them ahead of time. All of these images that I'm grabbing today are from the Flickr site in the Creative Commons attribute uh, licensing area. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK as my background. Now this image happens to be huge. It's a 1900 by like 1900 wide uh, tall image. I don't know that I would always use something this large, but considering the sizes of things that people are designing on these days for our sample, this is fine. So you can see that as large as this image is, it basically puts the image of the grass all the way through the bottom and kind of fades out into this um, blurry color here at the top, which I kind of like because that way I can get a solid color or a semi-solid color behind this content here, whereas down here where I've got actual blocks of color that block out the background image, I'm not as concerned with it being too busy down there. So I'm, I'm okay with that. And if I move forward, perhaps in this one, I would want to take a look at manipulating all of these course titles in one shot. And there is one rule that governs all of them. And if I take a look here, down here, I can see that as I click through, I'm in different divisions. So my Elective 2 division, my Tools Dev division. But notice here that as I click through these pieces up here, the paragraph HTML has had a CSS rule attached to it. In this case, it's a paragraph with a CSS rule called course title. And if I click through, I notice that that paragraph course title rule is in effect on all of my courses. So knowing that, I can now then go and find that tag and manipulate just the course title. And because they are part of each and every one of these blocks, once I manipulate it, it should manipulate all the way through. So once again, I want to find the course title. Now the important part to note here is that it starts with a P, which just indicates that it's manipulating a paragraph tag, but the dot course title is the one I'm going to look for over here. That's the actual class. So I'm going to slide down, and there it is, and I'm going to click on my pencil to edit it. And right now it has, it doesn't have a specific font attached to it. It doesn't have a specific background to it. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a background to it. I could do a simple background color. And I'm going to go ahead and apply it so you can see it in real time what's happening over here. If I like that color, I'm good. If I want to go back to no color, I can do that. And that takes me back to where I was. I'm also going to play around with the idea of putting a separate background image on top of that small block. Here I've chosen another background image, again, a little bit too large for what I'm doing here, but just to give you the, the uh, show of doing that, I can go ahead and apply the background. And what's important here, of course, is because I've identified the course title tag that's being applied throughout all of these blocks once I apply it to one and it applies to all. I'm okay with this particular course background uh, piece here, but I do need to modify my font because it does get to be a bit too dark against this background. So I'm going to come over to type and I'm still working with the course title rule. I'm going to click on color and this time I'm going to actually use my eyedropper and come up here and choose a color that's already a part of my background image. 
I like doing that because then I don't get too wild and crazy with colors. I don't also have to guess what that color is. But by choosing a color in the palette of the main picture already, I am pretty sure that it would work with the rest of the imagery. So I'm okay with this. Um, I've got a new color for my background. I could go ahead and change my font type here if I wanted to. Let me go ahead and do that just for the sake of demonstration. I'm not real fond of um, serif type fonts in web design when you're looking at something so small such as this. So I'm going to pop back to Palatino Linotype and I'm not really fond of that either. So I'm going to go back to one of my favorites which is Georgia. I could either stick with that or Verdana, which is another favorite. It's this little guy here. Okay. And I believe your original default font does have Verdana in it. So once I'm done with all that, I can go ahead and click on OK. I'm going to make sure I save it, of course, and then I'm going to have to upload my portfolio as well as all of these other images. One last little treat that I want to put on here is I do want some sort of graphic sitting up here in the upper right hand of my block. Now I could do that a couple of different ways. The challenge is that um, I have to make a decision. Do I either want to put this in as a background to this particular block? Remember we already have a background to the entire page so can't do it there. But I can certainly apply background to this page or to this block rather. Do I want to apply it as a block uh, background or do I want to apply it and insert it as a standalone image? I find that whenever I can apply it as a background image. That way I can then continue to put text on top of it. I could even put another image on top of it. But once it's laid in as a background it just kind of sits there and then I can do anything I want on top of it. Another advantage, of course, is that once you start inserting things in on top of it, you've got to be fairly proficient at moving things around, putting them in positions that you want, making sure that they don't move around when you don't want them to, etc. When you lay it in as a background, you kind of alleviate a lot of that. So here in this particular piece, I've clicked in up here, and I can see that I can uh, I can see that I'm in a, a span called name heading. But here's my division for my entire box. If I click on it, in, it indeed selects the entire box. So I know that that's where I'm going to want to go get a uh, background going in that entire block. That way I don't have to worry about it on individual elements within the block, but just the entire background. So I'm going to click over to my pencil and I'm going to go to background and then I'm going to choose a background image once again I'm choosing an image that I've already prepared I'm going to click OK. Now this time I can do a couple things. I'm going to go ahead and apply and show you what that looks like. That, go ahead, that goes ahead and layers the image left to right which would be fine if that's what I wanted but I want to go a little bit further and I want this background not to repeat. I only want one flower so I'm going to click on apply for that and now the thing that I need to do is I need to tell it the background position is going to be to the right. Sorry, that's a no repeat. Okay. And there I have my entire piece. Now in this particular case, if I take a look left to right, I can kind of get a sense of what the entire page might be look like. So once again this is yet another uh, combination of design. Once again I could go through and manipulate the entire page if I wanted through page property. I could find the individual elements and manipulate them either for text or color or I could lay in images in the background etc. What you need to do once again this week is go ahead and make some sort of significant change to your portfolio using these te techniques, go ahead and upload it to the server and be sure to include a hyperlink from your instructional design page to this newly created page. Talk to you later.